what was Hey there. So there is my solar trailer that attaches to my electric bike and essentially gives me, well, unlimited range. This is my 100 watt version that you see on the trailer. This took many iterations to get here. The first versions of it, I tried to use a corrugated plastic. Thought, well, it'd be a good idea for weight savings and, well, very cost effective. Unfortunately, the first time taking the thing out and really baking it a few times in the sun, uh, it's very easy to see that it, it warped quite a bit. A couple of things were happening there. It wasn't cooling enough from the backside of it, obviously. I was kind of smothering it or insulating it a bit. So I ended up scrapping that idea. I ended up getting another panel from a company called Top Solar. Unfortunately, they claim for it to be a 180 watt solar panel. After doing the calculations on the thing over and over, it was clear to me that they were relying on their specifications. Um, closer to, a, I would say, probably a 150 watt solar panel. I, I tried to contact them multiple times to discuss this to see if I had any damage. They ended up ordering a second one because they wasn't, wouldn't contact me after a week. But, yeah, but while I had the Top Solar panel, I decided to run another prototype test this time I took the cardboard that it came in. Uh, it was kind of protecting the back, kind of. Uh, of course, the biggest weakness of cardboard would have been water, so I wrapped it in plastic real good, cut a bunch of holes in it, as we got it to then to mount to the trailer using Velcro. Unfortunately, uh, I found with that cardboard, kind of the same thing that happened with the plastic. Once the panel got I real heated up, the cardboard then just started bowing on it. This is from a company called All Powers. I've already dealt with them before with a foldable solar panel. Uh, this one actually, they they have a warranty on it for three years. So I feel a lot better about it. I'm gonna build it the same way I rebuilt the 100 watt. And it's with this stuff called extruded aluminum. Pretty cool, this is a T-slot version of it. 2020, uh, 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. And this stuff's pretty cool. You can connect a 90 degree angle into it easy, put bolts on it, and I'm like wood or anything thing you don't have to re-drill and reconfig all your connections worked out real good with 100 watt i got a few modifications i still want to do to it but still the prototype's really really good i did some measurements online i probably came out with <laughs> i don't know my ocd went a little nuts i probably came out with like eight designs thought i liked them thought a little bit into it ended up totally redesigning the thing in my uh in my head so Luckily, I got it all in my head, and I like to use the real objects a lot of times to match up things. Uh, I have the measurements. Learning to switch over the millimeters because the uh, inches and feet they taught me in elementary school was a bunch of crap, so there's that. You got uh, quite a few connectors for this project. I got these, which are the quarter ones. These are pretty cool, they channel in. These can all, teeth can also be broken off if you have to put them like that. And these are the little T's that slide right into it that the bolt then connects into. And they just whoop, simply go in there. Pretty much pretty have to preload everything in, kind of think it out before you do, because uh, well, once you do, there's no way to get them into the slot with this kind. Uh, there are other kinds that are smaller that are able to drop into the slot. Like the ones that came with these corner brackets. These are real nice for kind of locking everything up, getting them even uh, more of a secure joint. And then just kind of along the same theme, I got a, a T connection. And pretty much I'm just gonna size up the rails and make a framing on it so you can easily attach to the trailer. Little eyelets are so thick, can't actually get the screws to go all the way in. One of the solutions I found since the garment was so fluffed up is pretty much just to take my pliers and give it a light squeeze. Not enough to actually squeeze into the material and definitely watching out for the uh, solar cells as I'm doing it. This basically gets it flat enough again then when I can get the bolt back into the other end of it. All right, to make the cut into the extruded aluminum, I don't have any kind of fancy saws or anything like that. Got a simple lumber cutting block. So I pretty much get that on there. Line the line up with my little slot here. And then I got a big wrench. What I do is I take a piece of rubber there so I don't scratch it. And then I just jam the wrench right in just like that. And of course, I put it towards the front here because most of your cutting on axle here is done with a forward motion. <laughs> high end saw there. Yeah, you can pick these up fairly cheap. You don't need to buy a $300 saw unless you're looking for like to the moon precision or something, which I don't know why you'd be building a spaceship out of aluminum. It's probably gonna melt on you. 
Yeah, but half the way over here. And after about a minute or two, got my cut. It doesn't look so bad. I'd usually just, uh, I take a file to the end of it. So got everything laid out in its basic form, got all the bolts and now all the corner pieces in. So now I'm just gonna basically come in with my ratchet and my square and I'm gonna start tightening everything down. I was gonna pull out the tape measure, make sure I got those rails right. Of course, everything is readjustable. That's one of the cool things about this uh, 2020 extruded aluminum. On these T brackets and corner brackets that look just like it, yeah, this piece is actually pretty good. The screws are really good. T nut it comes with, these are total crap. Yeah, you were reading the reviews about people cracking them in half. Sure enough, with a tiny little ratchet, I gave them just the slightest bit of torque and I can feel them snapping in there. So I'm gonna have to replace all the T nuts on all these brackets because that's crap. But then with them cracked in half, eventually it could pull off. Put that on my list of things I still gotta do on that. but. <clears throat> right now I'm ready to put it on the bike and see how well I match the uh, rails to the actual trailer. For my measurement, it should be right on. Basically that's where I'm gonna be, well, for this version, I'm gonna be Velcroing it to the trailer. Definitely gonna have to add the rear uh, fender, the Burley trailer back there because I, gotta, I don't know, it's at least a two inch deviation coming towards the back. Additionally with that, I'm gonna add one more cross member for it to come in line with this, uh, basically to hold up that back end from sagging like that. Because that don't look good. It'll look like, yeah, I go over some major bumps and it looks like it would definitely, definitely take that, uh, take it out due to the back end of weight. So now I'm, uh, I didn't like these plates. Yeah, they were fortunately scratching the trailer, so. And take those off they would have gouged into it and then this was a corner bracket of course using those crap nuts that were cracking in half change that to a, a t here using uh good t nuts where i'm replacing that i'm adding that other corner brace just to make that stronger all right got all those faulty t screws replaced got it slightly redesigned i'm adding a uh, Gorilla tape along the edge here for a couple reasons. Kind of help the whole panel stay attached and help the bolts out. So there's no kind of stress there. And the other reason is that it, quite frankly, to keep the panel from slapping the rails that ends up making a lot of noise. So I'm gonna add the tape all the way around the outside and connect it to it and it'll help out. Right there, you can see as you're going down the bumpy road has it. Yeah, sort of, it starts making that noise there but a lot. <laughs> so in addition to the tape, I've also added eight washers around the side. And this is just to ensure that the panel doesn't rip off from the mount. Then the trailer is held on by these three Velcro straps on this side, because this would be the side I'll primarily be opening it up from. Then the other side, I have quite a bit more Velcro to pretty much act as like a hinging system for it and to hold it on. And it's basically just floating in the air with it holding it up like that, which is good because I don't want it touching the ground. Luckily, with two batteries in there, I found it works as a good counterweight for the solar panel when it's at this angle. I had to add washers along the side here with a little bit of a steel stripping. This just just so that the Velcro can't go back and forth and these are right up against the rails. This keeps the whole solar panel from being able to slide back and forth. I found at a test yesterday when I got it up to about, eh, I think about 32 miles per hour, it did slide back a couple inches. So I ended up adding these and then I got some washers, the same thing on the other side with the, all that Velcro there. Additionally, I also have these L brackets here. Um, I can actually bolt the whole unit down to the Burley trailer. It has these mount points where it'll easily screw in. If I need to, I'll add the bolts. I'll just take one from back here and add it to that. It does make it real secure where it doesn't shake, but also it kind of makes it a pain in the butt to get into. It's still easy to use the Velcro if I don't have to use that feature, but it, this also helps kind of stabilize it so I don't have it shifting left and right on me on the trailer. So we kind of have a double purpose there. 
The electrical system you see here is, I mean, it's pretty basic. I have other videos breaking down how to charge with solar, uh, how the solar batteries and everything work, but quick like, explanation of uh, everything in the trailer. And of course it's coming from the solar panel, it comes in, I got the MC4 come over and I got them converted into uh, Anderson plugs just because MC4s are kind of a pain in the butt to unplug and plug back in. And then it comes into the my little meter here. Uh, of course, it's not on. This is all on solar side. This will show me before any of the conversions or anything how much solar I'm pulling. Uh, as long as I don't go into a deep shadow or anything, it'll keep stats of like total power and things like that. But yeah, shadows do, do reset this meter here. Uh, that basically goes down from there yeah, into the Jenison is inside of the bag. That comes back out and I made a little uh, power strip here. This basically is a junction for everything that comes into it. Uh, that's where the solar converter comes into. These are uh, two batteries that go into it. That goes to the front of the trailer back to the bike and the bike just basically plugs it in to hit end right here. So I got an XT60 connector there and when I disconnect the trailer it just pops right out. I don't even have to think about that. And yeah, for the bag here, this is a basic tool bag. And then I have straps wrapped around the trailer. This is so the batteries don't bounce around in there. I clip them together. And that's good to go. I can pretty much start picking up the trailer from the whole tool bag. So it's very securely in there. And then of course, leftover room would be any kind of my camping gear and sleeping pad and stuff like that. May have some of it on the bike and then a bit of it back there. Of course, I do have to worry about uh, weight distribution. It's pretty easy to figure out if the handlebars are wiggling. Uh, probably don't have the weight distributed right. Probably have too much in the back, need more in the front. But you figure that out through touring after a while. Got these end caps off AliExpress and they just really just kind of finish it off there. Oh. The Velcro does work good, but I want to try to add these quick release latches. They work a lot like the top of a tent trailer, they just kind of pop on. I'm doing this because the Velcro ends up taking me uh, sometimes a couple minutes to get it, you know, securely on there to make sure there's no kind of flop going on. It should be straightforward. The Burley has several uh, mount points on it, so that'll allow me to hook this up. And then the track, I can easily put the latch in there. All right, got the first latch on there. It took a little bit of modifications to get it on, but it's working really good. Holds it down real secure and best of all, I'm able to do it in a very short time period. Don't think those will shake loose. Should be pretty good there. I did have to do a little bit of modifications to the bracket to be able to get it to latch on, given the close proximity to the other bowl. For that, I basically took a couple of pliers and I bent the whole thing all the way backwards, and this is just so it had a better reach. So yeah, I bent it so basically it was able to reach the mechanism properly, given the close proximity of each other. I believe these are steel, so they do take quite a bit of convincing to uh, bend all the way backwards, but good enough time with the pliers, and sure enough, it gets there. So yeah, pretty much bent all the way backwards, and then, yeah, it makes a perfect latch. And these parts, of course, I'm able to adjust the uh, distance that I need to get it to latch down properly. Nice, that worked out very good. It's really easy to open up the trailer. It's got it secure on there and it's easy to latch it back down. And then for the other side, I got some little hinges that were made for actually for the 2020 extruded aluminum. So yeah, these, these new hinges, they're so far, they're working great. Give it a little pop, pop the little side latch that I got purposely catching. And then yeah, she's easily open. But now just to shut it, I can easily just pop it back down. Put the latches on it and the trailer is secure and good to go. Adding this little piece onto the back, I uh, found after today's ride, 
the connection I had between it and the back bumper, well, it was going like that over and over. Well, Velcro has its limits. After it breaks so many of those strings, it just doesn't stick anymore. So I'm gonna add the latch design a lot like I have up here. So got one more hinge coming for that to add three to that side. Just make me feel a little bit more comfortable. So yeah, it will be three latches on one side and then three hinges on the other. And that basically hold it. Actually ended up adding uh, another one of those clamps on the back side of the fender just to keep it from wobbling on the one side. So now it has a total of four. Velcro was just kind of a prototype and I found that some of it was already ripping, just going a few short miles here in the city. Nice the rear safety lights came in. I got these to put on the back end of the panel just to increase my visibility. Not looking to get hit anytime soon. All right, now just need a little bit of uh, wire management. For this, I'll just be using a Gorilla Tape, taping them down inside of the channels. In order to get the lights to run off my 48 volt system, I basically used a step down buck here. These are fairly cheap, uh, like everything you find it down in the description below. But yeah, it's coming in, it's coming off the 48 volt and then it spits out 12 volt on the other side. I got the switch on uh, this side so it kills the whole buck just to make it more energy efficient. And a little handy dandy switch here. Nice. <laughs> That's cool. Ended up getting some 59 inch long extruded aluminum just to be able to complete the sides here. Given that the sides serve a few purposes, one of them is for, well, for structure and to keep it flat. And the other is, well, this panel is about just as wide as a doorway. So it kind of helps it if it bumps that. And, you know, it protects the panel from uh, taking any kind of damage. So I just got to take off the old tape and all my uh, nuts and washers up there and swap these out real quick. Nice. The longer bars definitely helped uh, the structure just keep locked in all that much more. Uh, I was afraid a lot with the hinge one here that it was, well, it actually was, it was slightly twisting. I could see that it was offset. Uh, by putting the frame on, I was able to flatten everything back out and kind of, well, I kind of twisted the bar back to the normal state it should be in by, while well, bolting it in a correct angle. So everything works real good. I had to readjust the back ones a couple times to get the latches to work right. They have to be, uh, the top part has to be inset a little bit for the latch to catch it just right or they'll end up popping off. But I, I think I got that now. And now if you look at the front two corners here, everything is real nice. So before I could see one was going up and one was going down. So it was, it was having a little bit of a twisting issue there. And this thing is securely on there. I can pick up the whole trailer from the panel. Yeah, it's not coming off. I really like the way this turned out. Um, after testing it, uh, if I keep between 15 to 20 miles per hour, I could pretty much go as long as the sun's out. So yeah, I kind of made the forever e-bike there. I do have uh, 55 amp hours of uh, 48 volt batteries in there, but that's just because I like to have a good gas tank. Every once in a while, you do want to go fast or go up a steep mountain. Thanks for watching, and until next time. I got nothing.